Hi guys, Andy Champagne here with Concentrator Repair Services. Hey, today's video I'm going to go through the insides of a concentrator and let you know how a concentrator works. Basically, on all your concentrators, they've all got the same parts inside. They just may be designed a little bit differently because of each manufacturer designs the parts a little differently. So first off, inside your concentrators, each one will have a compressor here on this one we got a compressor right here. Inside most of your concentrators you've got four-way directional valves. You got a four-way directional valve here and then also over here on this one you got a four-way directional valve. You got sieve beds inside your concentrators. Inside your concentrators you've got filters. Filters up here. There's pressure regulators inside here. Cooling fans. You've all got circuit boards. Inside your concentrators, you've got other valves. On this one here, you've got a PE valve. You've got a pilot assembly valve down here by the four-way valve on this one. So basically, inside your concentrators, they've all got the same stuff. They're just designed a little bit differently. Now, how an oxygen concentrator works, let's turn this thing around. When you first turn on the system, the compressor turns on. This right here, the compressor will put the pressure into the system. The air will flow first to a four-way directional valve. This one's down here located. Four-way directional valve will direct the air towards one of these sieve beds. When the first sieve bed, uh, the air goes into the first sieve bed, this sieve bed pressurizes. When this pressurizes, <clears throat> the, the circuit board monitors the pressure in here. This will reach a certain pressure, and then the four-way valve, the circuit board, will tell the four-way valve to shift. That four-way valve will shift. This bed will depressurize, allowing the second bed to pressurize. When the, the sieve bed pressurizes, there's sieve material inside. This sieve material traps all the, the molecules in the air, the nitrogen, the argon, and other trace gases, and allows oxygen to pass through. Oxygen molecules are much larger than nitrogen. When the oxygen passes through, it goes into an accumulator tank or a product tank. This right here, this accumulator tank, this is where the oxygen accumulates to a 95% oxygen. <clears throat> so the bed pressurizes, oxygen passes through, the nitrogen argon gets held back by the sieve material, the four-way valve will shift, and it then will release the uh, argon and other trace gases out the bed. The four-way valve shifts, directs the air to go to this sieve bed. This sieve bed will pressurize, allowing oxygen to pass through into the product tank, and then depressurize after the four-way valve shifts, and the cycle happens over and over again. The uh, <clears throat> product tank, where the oxygen is accumulated, there's a, a line that goes from the accumulator tank to the circuit board. That's where the uh, circuit board monitors the oxygen levels. The oxygen levels are indicated on an oxygen indicator display on most concentrators. The bottom light is a green one. It lets you know that the oxygen concentrator is producing good oxygen. 95% is ideal. 90% or higher is considered medical grade. When the concentration of oxygen reaches below 85%, you'll get a yellow light. If it reaches below 70%, you'll get a red light and the unit will shouldn't shut down an alarm. The air that goes into the accumulator tank passes through the flow meter where you can adjust your patient um, liters per minute and then comes out the patient outlet. That, in a nutshell, basically how the oxygen concentrator works. Those are the parts inside that I described and how it works. If you got any questions on this uh, video, uh, give me a call at area code 702-252-4186 or you can shoot me an email at o2crs at yahoo.com. You can also look me up on the web at www.o2crs.com. Thank you and have a wonderful day.